Today, I want to introduce you to a project that I'm excited to reveal, Kate's GPT. With all of the stuff going on with learning language models and the application of AI already embedded in tons of services, I was excited to bring together the intersection of Kubernetes and AI to produce something useful for the community. Kate's GPT is a brand new open source project that combines codified SRE knowledge with Kubernetes and AI. What does this really mean? Well, my ambition is that anybody can look at a bunch of events, error logs, and other misconfigurations and not have to do that kind of guessing game of, well, I don't know how these work, or maybe this is the fix. What we instead do is we built some high quality analyzers that can actually start to process that data, aggregate it, and then use AI to refine it into a set of simple solutions. Join me as I walk you through today, how to get set up, what are some of the perks and cool things about Kate's uh, GPT, and also the future roadmap for how you can get involved too. Thank you. On my screen, you can see we have the repository. You can find this by going to katesgpt.ai and clicking on the Get Started button. That takes you straight through to this GitHub repo. Please do give us a star if you think we're doing good work. Leave some feedback issues, all welcome. We're really happy to have people in the repository. The first thing you'll notice that to get started, you need to do something called Brew. Brew is a website, it's a packaging manager, so you can install Brew on Linux or on Mac. Don't worry though, if you're a Windows user, we also produce a Windows binary, although it's not available through Brew. Just to sidebar there, if you do want to take the Windows binary, you go to our releases and you can find it here. Otherwise, if you're on Linux or Mac, you simply type these two commands, brew tap and brew install. The reason that I've chosen to use brew is because we can upgrade it really easily. We can push a new release out, you can take that release and you get all the benefits of that. The website itself and the GitHub repository should be pretty straightforward to understand. As I said, we've got a roadmap that I'll talk about later on that is also available in the project tab up above. The usage of Kate's GPT is straightforward because I don't want to make a convoluted workflow and my peers and I feel like the best way to have anything adopted is to make the DX good. So please do leave your feedback on anything that doesn't feel right. Getting started is pretty straightforward and that's what we're going to do next. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump across and show you exactly what you need to do. So assuming you now have Kate's GPT installed, we can type the command and we can see that there it is. Now what we need to do is type KHGT generate. What this does is it goes off and it grabs an OpenAI key. Now, OpenAI is our default provider right now, but eventually that won't always be the case. We're looking at using other providers such as BARD, and we may even want to use different models between those providers. The long-term scope is that we eventually have something like Kubeflow AI ML models available where you can have custom endpoints to connect because not everybody wants to use OpenAI, and I'm sure that there'll be security concerns for folks who want to use on-prem installations with Kate's GPT. I think they feel a lot safer if they could use their own AI models eventually. But for now, you go ahead and grab that key, and you type auth to insert that key, right? So once you've got your key, you say Kate's GPT auth, and with that auth command, it will say, hey, do you want to go ahead and install this? I've already got mine, so I don't need to run auth, but you'll say, hey, that's okay, all auth, there you go. Once you've got that, you're ready to go. This demo cluster that I've got is a bit of a wreck. So what you can see here is on my computer, I've got a connection to a Kate's cluster that's actually behind me that had a power cut just the other night. So this is a real world scenario where three of the nodes went down and I've tried to bring them back up. I don't know what's going on, but this is an overwhelming level of issues, right? So I've cordoned the nodes that are broken. I'm trying to move things around, but any SRE platform or DevOps engineer will know that you have to kind of incrementally go through these things and uh, triage issues as you go. So this is where we can first take a look at what we can do. So the first command we can run is analyze. The analyze command allows us to do uh, sort of a full inspection of health across the available analyzers. What you can also do and what you can see here is that we support the ability to add filters. So I just want to see what's going on in this initial example of what's going on with all the pods in my cluster, right? And this pod analysis filter will actually go through all those pods and pull out the error messages. That's kind of useful, right? That's interesting, but that's really not where the AI part gets involved, right? This is just taking error messages. So what we actually wanna do is to combine the error, the event log, and the config, and parcel that up into something that has meaning. So that's where we add explain. The explain command 
will do a few things. The first time you run it, you'll see that you get this bar. This is a loading bar because what's happening is it's starting to batch together a bunch of API calls in the background, and then it's passing that information and coming back again. And now what's happened is we're starting to see that the responses give us these high quality solutions, checking to see what is going on with your cluster. If you're not the sort of person that wants to consume this in this text format, again, you can add a dash O, JSON, uh, and maybe you want to pass that into something like JQ, right? And once you've got that, you can start to put it into your CI CD pipeline. You can start to surface that up in your own tooling. For example, one of the things on our short term roadmap is to have a Slack and a Teams integration so that you can see these kind of messages and click through to resolve. Already, what we're seeing is that we've got this ability now to start looking at errors and to start triaging them in a meaningful way. There are some other commands that I think are going to help to increase accessibility here. We support multi languages, right? So all of the responses that come back, we can convert into different languages. There are the supported languages currently here in the language parameter uh, explainer here on the command. But we also want to go a bit further than that and have the ability to have different outputs as well, because you may well want to pipe this into YAML. You may well want to be able to send this to a gRPC service. So do please work with us to tell us what will make this project successful for you. Again, the ability to an analyze something quickly and start finding out problems in your cluster is super important. Now, you'll see that I've just selected pods here. If I take the filter off, this list will grow because evidently we've got nine pod issues, but as you can see here, 28 total issues. So that will be everything from service accounts. Uh, that will be looking at things like PVC issues, replica set issues, and we're going through and analyzing what those problems are. We've codified a lot of my and other uh, colleagues' knowledge into this, but it's an ever-expanding field. And this is where my appeal to you starts. One of the things that would really help make this project successful is contribution. Contribution from expert SREs who know way more than me about current recurring problems in Kubernetes. I would implore you to reach out to me, get involved, look at the GitHub repository and say, hey, you know what? I can build an analyzer. That's pretty easy. Please do, because this is a community project. We want it to be successful in a way that will enable people to build upon it to make more interesting solutions to help their workflows. If you found this useful, exciting, compelling, please do come check it out. It's kate.gbt.ai. I'm excited to build this with you. The potential is limitless. We're looking at building an operator to do reconciliation in the cluster so that we can have primitives that will hold the current suggestions for fixes. We're looking to also give you a way of sharing your KHGPT data with a colleague. So the result or the error that they might have found, you can then benefit from that. All of these kind of things are productivity enhancements through AI. And the beauty of this is as the AI services evolve, so as we move from uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo to DaVinci models, as we move from uh, potentially OpenAI to BARD and to other AI products, you'll benefit from all of that. We're not king making. We're not choosing one AI product and saying, that's what this open source product uses. It's an open backend. Please come build it with me. I can't wait to see what we come up with. Thanks again.